Okay, so lesson E in unit one deals with the idea of closure. And closure might not be the easiest to define, but once you grasp the concept, I think you'll understand it. Uh, the objective, again, this is the thing at the end, you should be able to say, yes, I can explain whether or not the set, sets of numbers are closed or not closed under certain operations. The term operation refers to very simply adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Those are your operations. Okay. Uh, closure property. Okay. The best way to define it is by using the actual result. So sets of numbers are either closed, all right, or not closed. So a set is closed under an operation if and only if the operation on two elements of the set produces an element from another set. Like I said, that may be very difficult to comprehend right now, but once you see it with numbers and examples, I think that we'll come back to this definition. It'll make more sense. Okay? If an element outside of the set is produced by that operation, then we'll say that it's not closed. Okay? I'm not going to read these. This is just a review of your terms. Okay? But I am going to draw this little figure here, which you've seen before. Okay, natural numbers are our smallest. Next is the whole numbers. Okay, after that are our integers. After that we have our rational numbers. Which we use a Q for. That's a Q. Alright, then off to the side we have our irrational numbers. And then remember the whole thing. Alright, we call real numbers. Okay. You need to have this diagram on your homework if you want credit when we check it in tomorrow. All right, let's get right to the examples. I included these terms just so we can refer back to it. All right, example one asks us to examine each of the following statements and decide if they are true or false. If they're false, we're asked to give an example. Okay, we're actually going to give an example both ways. All right, because really that's how you get to understand this. So first of all, whole numbers, let's go back to the definition. Whole numbers are positive numbers without decimals or fractions. They include the number zero. Okay? So, for example, what this is saying is, if I take two whole numbers, let's say three and four, and add them together, I get seven. Is seven a whole number? Yes. Let me take two other whole numbers. All right, let's say zero and ten. I add them together, I get ten. Is ten a whole number? Yes. Okay? Is there an example that you could think of that wouldn't produce a whole number? And in this case, the answer is no, because this is true. Okay? So, it may take you a few examples just to get the idea. All right, let's move on to B. The set of natural numbers is closed under subtraction. Okay, so natural numbers, remember, are the positive whole numbers without decimals or fractions not including zero. We call these counting numbers. Okay? Because when you count, it's it's natural count. One, two, three, four, five, six. No one starts at zero. Okay? So, let's take two natural numbers. Alright, let's say seven and four. If we subtract seven and four, we get three. Three is one of those counting numbers. So it looks like this may be closed. Okay? Let's try doing it the other way around. Four minus seven. That's negative 3. Negative 3 is not a natural number, so therefore this is false. Or not closed would be the term, all right, if you weren't asked a true or false question, all right, whereas this is closed up here. Okay, so, um, and there's other examples you could think of. There's obviously an infinite number of examples, but, you know, if I were to say 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. Zero is not a natural number. All right, so these are my examples that prove that this is false. All right, so let me go ahead and highlight these two. Because these are the examples that prove that this is not closed. All right. And, of course, you have some U-try problems. Remember, you'll do these tomorrow in class. All right, uh, might need some time to let this thing soak in a little bit. All right, and then uh, when we come in for warm-ups, this should make more sense. All right, example two. We're asked to read each statement and determine which of the four operations is closed and which it's not closed for. 
Okay. So we're going to also make sure we include our support. So first of all, the set of whole numbers for addition. Okay. Again, we just talked about this, but just to do more, if I said 3 plus 10, that's 13. Those are all whole numbers. All right. Uh, 6 plus 6 is 12. That's a whole number. All right. Uh, 9 plus 0 is 9. That's a whole number. Okay. So we would say for addition, it's closed. How about subtraction? Okay. Now, I know whole numbers does not include a negative. So I want to see if I could produce a negative number with subtraction. Okay, so if I were to do 3 minus 7, that would produce negative 4. So this is not closed. Okay, how about multiplication? Okay, remember whole numbers would be if I end up with a decimal answer, or if I end up with a fraction answer, or if I end up with a negative answer, that would disprove or say that this is not close. Okay, so multiplication, whole numbers. 0 times 3 is 0. That's a whole number. 1 times 3 is 3. Whole number. 3 times 1. Sometimes turning it around like in subtraction will help you. Not in this case. 3 is, is also there. All right. Let's try some bigger numbers. How about 4 times 7? That's 28. 28 is a whole number. Okay. Um, you could try more if you need to. All right. But thinking about it, all right, whenever I multiply whole numbers together, my result's going to be a whole number. So it's close. Okay. How about division? Remember, all it takes is one. So can we produce a negative number with dividing two whole numbers? No, because we know the rules of division, a negative divided by a negative is going to come out to be a positive. Okay, uh, sorry, negatives aren't even whole numbers, so a positive divided by a positive is going to come out to be positive. Okay, however, if I did 1 divided by 3, I get 1 third, or 0.3 repeating, so this is not closed. Alright, how about rational numbers for addition? Okay, I'm looking to produce a number that's irrational when I add two numbers together. Okay, so you might think decimals, okay, because irrational numbers are decimals that do not terminate or repeat. Okay, any decimal is really just a fraction rewritten. If it terminates or repeats, it's a fraction that's been rewritten as a decimal. So, let's start with fractions, okay. One-third plus one-third two-thirds. Still a fraction. You may not be good at adding fractions, but my guess is you probably understand that when you add a fraction with a fraction, your result is a fraction. When you subtract a fraction with a fraction, your result is a fraction. Okay? When you add a whole number in a fraction, your answer is going to be a whole number in a fraction, or we call that a mixed number, or you could just write it in fraction form. Okay? Addition with rational numbers is closed. All right. Subtraction with rational numbers. Rational numbers, that includes everything. So negatives, positives, decimals that terminate or repeat, fractions. Okay. Again, try to think of one that doesn't give you that. Okay. And you may think, well, what about a decimal divided by a decimal? Okay. Keep in mind that decimals divided by, or subtracted from decimals. All right. If the decimal terminates or repeats, it's a rational number, and that means it could be rewritten as a fraction. All right? And when we subtract fractions, again, we end up with either whole number or fractions. Okay? It's closed here. All right? Multiplication. All right? Again, try to think of something that's going to produce um, a irrational number, and you're not going to find it. So once again, we're closed here. And the same is true for division. All right. You could always multiply fractions and divide fractions together and come up with either whole number or fractional answers. Okay. Again, you need to understand how important it is to, to get this point down. Decimals that terminate or repeat can be written as fractions. It may not be easy, 
but you can do it. And because it can be written as a fraction, all right, uh, it can't end up becoming irrational through those four operations. All right. Uh, so that's really it. Okay, so we'll work on the U tries tomorrow in class. Remember, you have these three things at the bottom that you have to do if you want credit for your homework. All right, after watching this video, I can. Hopefully, you could be able to tell us what closure means. If not, write it here. And then check off what you're going to do to learn this concept so you do well on the quiz and test and you understand basically how our numbers work. See you tomorrow.